This is the open on BNM Bloomberg. We were talking before the break about the jobs market in Canada, which has been fairly resilient. But as for the number of jobs that are offering the flexibility to work from home, well, we are starting to see a slowdown. Veteran Wall Street economist Torsten Slock of Apollo shared a graph today that's been making the rounds on social media. Slock was making a point about the U.S. economy since he showed the number of new job openings in the U.S. that offer work from home. But that data also included countries like the U.K. and Canada. And indeed, Canada's percentage of new jobs offering work from home has been slowing. Pre-pandemic, you had less than 2% of the new jobs in this country uh, that were offering that as an option. By early last year, the percentage had skyrocketed to nearly 12%. But this year, we are seeing an easing off those highs. And obviously, a lot of CEOs have been talking about the need for their workforce to get back into the office. Meanwhile, a lot of CEOs have been trying to make their case to investors, and at least some of them are winning that battle because we have been talking a lot about this U.S. bull market rally, the S&P 500 up more than 20 percent from its lows from last year. I know the bears often dismiss the gains and frequently point to the strength of just a few tech stocks. But one thing about the markets, even if you're bearish, as a money manager, you don't want to trail your peers in performance. And we talked yesterday about how Citigroup now says positioning in U.S. stock futures is the most bullish it has been since 2010. We also talked yesterday about easing inflation pressures uh, that are starting to temper uh, some of the growth concerns out there. And this gets complicated because you just had literally the Fed chair this morning telling us that we might see more rate hikes. And, and clearly that is because of the inflation story. But actually, um, operating margins, the es estimates on Wall Street have been have been improving. Um, bulls are using inflation charts to make their case, too. Veteran strategist Ed Yardeni had shared a chart of inflation trends uh, over decades uh, to make the case that arguably we might be having more of a conversation around transitory inflation than anybody thought in the past year. Now, we'll see how that plays out. But we also talked about how generally a pause on interest rates by the Fed, which they, they decided on recently, albeit a lukewarm commitment to that, that that can be a bullish sign for stocks. And then beyond all of that, it is worth pointing out that even with recessionary concerns, investors can ultimately ignore the recession risks. Actually, RBC shared a graph today of the recessionary period coming out of World War II when we saw a steady stream of money moving into the stock market despite the economic uncertainty. And we might be able to show you that chart, but those are the kinds of charts that the bulls end up sharing with the bears to make their case right now. And we are back with Leslie Marks from McKenzie Investments. Uh, and I guess when it comes to where you put your money right now, you're actually still geographically in the stock market, you're still favoring the US, is that right? Right, now I think we have to sort of go back a step to talk about that call because it, we just released our mid-year outlook. In our mid-year outlook, we are recommending a slight underweight to equities in favor of bonds. Okay. And then we make a relative geographic call within equities. We've, we've said that we believe that U.S. equities will do better for the next six months of the year than other areas around the world. And the reason for that is, well, there's several reasons for that. But the first one is um, we talked about the consumer today. We think that the consumer is going to hold on, is going to continue to hold on for longer than people expect. The U.S. market is a much more consumer-oriented market. 70% of the U.S. economy is consumer-driven. So that's a very good tailwind for the U.S. economy. Um, the second reason is because we believe that equities are going to enter into a softer period here over the next six months because of the economic backdrop just in general and, and globally, um, in a flight to safety view, investors will flock to U.S. equities that will also benefit the U.S. dollar. As we all know, in a risk-off environment, the U.S. dollar tends to do well. So there were you know, a few reasons that really brought us to the, the relative trade. Now, I'm sure people would say, well, what about the fact that the S&P has been one of the strongest performing markets, certainly off the lows in October. Right. And in, in, in our world, when we think about the ability to add value by stock selection or picking stocks in the other 493 stocks that haven't participated in this big rally, because remember, 
the move in the S&P 500 is very concentrated in seven stocks. So there's a lot of opportunity still in that other 493 stocks. So we think for an active uh, investor in the U.S. market, there will still be opportunity, despite the fact that the backdrop is going to be a little bit softer for equities in the second half of this year. So it almost sounds like you're, you're not talking about tech, which has had the big rally this year, but you're also not talking about some of those sectors that tend to dominate the Canadian landscape. It would be that kind of stuff that's more tied to the consumer being resilient that maybe you've got some selection in the S&P 500 with? Exactly, exactly. You, you, you look at the makeup of the Canadian stock market, which is at an extremely attractive valuation level, but the, the emphasis on financials and energy, we think is going to be a headwind for the TSX overall through the second half of this year. And so relatively speaking, in, in the US, you don't have that same exposure to energy. You have a much more diversified um, landscape that's more consumer driven, multinational healthcare, for example, areas that even from a, a defensive lens, consumer staples as well, you have more opportunity to invest in those global market leader type companies outside of, you know, or in addition to the, that magnificent seven that's been really driving the market. And, and I don't want to take away from this technology trend. I mean, I remember going through this as a portfolio manager in 1998, 1999, 2000 yeah. with the internet boom. And I, I, I do think that there are some similarities to what we're seeing here on um, the boom that is derived from investment in artificial intelligence. And so I don't want to take away from that. And I still think that that's going to be a very strong and, and dominant trend. Could I say that, you know, we're, we, we fully price that in uh, today? No, I don't have that crystal ball here. Oh, it's, I mean, it, I, who, who does? Right, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, but, 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 but being bearish against that trend has not paid off for a lot of people, so they got to figure that part out. Um, I'm sure before we let you go, some of our audience hears that at the end of the day, you're still um, shifting some money away from equities as part of a portfolio strategy. So what are some of the other areas you like? I mean, I guess that's within fixed income. That right. So within at. fixed income, the area that we're favoring is investment grade corporate. So again, we don't want to go out on the risk curve with high yield, but we still believe that there is high quality in investment grade corporate and you get some additional yield pickup. Now, of course, the outlook for interest rates, our, our view is that we think that inflation is going to be stickier and so rates are going to be higher for longer. But we still think that we're, we're close to if we haven't already seen the peak in interest rates. So on a relative basis, you get the pickup from investment grade for, for yield. And we think that um, since we're near or at, have already seen the peak in yield, that as yields start to come down, obviously bonds will start to rally. 